We're here at Mount Manganui and we've come to look at the main feature, the mount, and try and understand how it was formed. We know that it was a rhyolite dome extruded out from the earth two and a half million years ago, but since that time it has been eroded somewhat. The mount is probably the best example of a rhyolite dome anywhere in New Zealand. So I'll try and explain what a rhyolite dome is and how the mount got to the shape. I'll draw a cross section through a dome. So if this was the land surface, as we see here, and there's a magma chamber way down here, at some point in time, some viscous rhyolite started coming up a conduit towards the, the surface here and broke through the land like so. By viscous, I mean rather sticky. It's got about 70% silica in it, but it's also very hot be 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade when it's coming out and it extrudes out like toothpaste out of the vent so it may start growing up and pushing outwards and then we get lava flows coming out this way and a dome up there maybe some more lava flows coming out like that but the lava flows doesn't flow off like a liquid so viscous that it just moves slowly there and then stops with a big front so this is about what Mount Monganui here would have looked like two and a half million years ago. And since that time there's been erosion by the sea and by rivers and it's removed all this side here and it's got it over steepened and over here it's removed most of it like so and it's over steepened like this. So we do have little remnants of the lava flows out here on the eastern side at the east end of the beach. Some rhyolite domes can grow from within, rather like a balloon. So it starts off here and the lava's pushing in in all directions, like we see there, and it grows upwards internally like a balloon. So it just grows outwards in all directions, like we see there. But some versions, some rhyolite domes, can grow in a slightly different way. So the conduit is maintained and thick lava comes out from here and flows out with steep slopes and then more comes out and it flows out this way like so and like so and continues to grow upwards from the top and we get the same shape volcano dome but one is growing internally and one is growing from the top outwards So we're here at the east end of the main Mount Monganui surf beach and there are a number of small islands and rocks scattered around here. These are the remnants or eroded remnants of the eastern lava flows. Here we've got some eroded blocks of the rhyolite that came out from the volcano. One of the first things we notice is it's very light coloured but it's also banded or layered. So a light colour is telling me immediately that it's got a lot of silica in it, maybe 70% or more, whereas basalts or andesites are grey or dark grey even, they've got far less silica so they're quite dark coloured volcanic rocks. If we look around we can see some of these rocks are pinkish and that depends on the amount of iron weathering that's happened to give these slightly different colours. They don't have large crystals in them so they've been erupted on the surface of the earth and cooled quite quickly not giving enough time for large crystals to grow. So here we can see the stripes are a little bit darker uh, through here and they've got a little bit of shape to them and uh, this is because the rhyolite lava is not thoroughly mixed as it comes out. We're getting thin bands of glass, very fine crystals and so this is showing the movement of the lava streaking it out. So here we've got numerous fractures through the rhyolite lava, often in all different directions, but some of them like this here are radiating outwards. And here we've got a central portion. How that was formed, I don't know. They look rather like what we get in pillow lavas and basalts and andesites, but this clearly isn't a pillow lava. The eruption of these domes can take weeks to months, even sometimes years, and sometimes they come in pulses. 
And so at times we can get parts of that dome cool and solidify and then magma may then be injected up into the dome and cause that solidified rock to be broken up. And so here, for example, we see an area that was obviously solidified and then broken up and moved outwards and upwards into this heap of what we call breccia. The rhyolite that's extruded out as these domes has got very little gas in it at all. But we do have a little bit of evidence as we walk around the base of the mountain track that there was some small ash eruptions prior to the extrusion of the lava. We're on the track going around the base of the mount and here we see a good exposure of some of that material that was thrown out from the vent before the dome itself was extruded. So here's a, a blocky deposit, got bits of pumice, bits of rhyolite and lots of ash in it. And then higher up there's a, a whole layer of pumice, as you can see up there coming over the top. So this all came out initially from the vent before the rhyolite extruded out and over the top of it. So these smaller blocks of rhyolite within the ash are probably thrown out into the air and landed in it. Some of these bigger blocks are probably solidified on the outside of the dome and rolling down the hill into and on top of this ash as it was being deposited. If we just come along here a little distance, here we can see much larger blocks of solid rhyolite that will have broken off the front of the advancing lava flows and then the lava is extruded out over the top of them. So none of these pieces of rhyolite are rounded and they're all quite angular so that's telling us it was already solid before they were thrown out or rolled down into the ash. Look at the angle on this one here. Here's another exposure of bedded ash and pumice layers as we go along. Here on the north side of the mount as we walk around it, we see beautiful examples of flow banding extending right along the foreshore here. The flow of that lava was going outwards away from the vent and away from the mount. So we, here within the flow banded rhyolite, we get examples of it being very viscous. So we're getting rolls like a carpet created here. And there's another beautiful fold up in here. It's always a revelation to me how a simple feature like the mount has so much detail in it about how it erupted and was formed. And then, of course, how it's been eroded since then into the shape we see so prominently here at the mouth of the Tauranga Harbour.